In the previous week, we looked at the notion of computable functions, and we found a way to rigorously define a notion of computability using Turing machines. However, we will need to connect computability to definability in uh, arithmetic, and for that it will be uh, important to have a more algebraic approach to defining computability. And this is provided by the uh, framework of primitive recursion, or more general uh, recursive functions. The general idea um, here is that you start with a very small set of basic functions, which uh, are you consider computable uh, or effective, and then generate new functions from these using uh, two basic operations. So the basic functions are the zero function, the successor function, and the projection. So for every n and every i, this function is considered uh, basic. And it's probably a good idea to keep track of the computability of the functions we consider um, or encounter in terms of Turing machines. And we've seen in class that uh, these functions here are clearly computable by a Turing machine. So now that we have the basic or fixed the basic functions, we can look at how do we generate new functions from those basic functions. And we will consider two operations. One is composition. So um, we can put build a new function f by composing h and a, a bunch of functions gi. Then there's another scheme, which is maybe a little bit less familiar, and that's called primitive recursion. So we can build a new function from uh, uh, known functions g and h by fixing the base case g here for f in the second component, and then uh, iterating or um, the definition of f. So for uh, y plus one here, we use the recursion, so the previous value of um, f and as well as x and y and apply h to it. And this way we define y plus one. This may seem a little bit unfamiliar at first sight or maybe a little bit of a strange way of writing a recursion, but we'll go over a few examples uh, uh, in, a, in a moment that hopefully clarify this a bit. So the primitive recursive functions are now defined to be the smallest subsets, subset of the set of all uh, functions where we collect all n array functions for all arity here in one big set f. So we take the smallest subset of that containing the basic functions and that set is closed under composition and primitive recursion. So let's look at a couple of examples how to show that certain functions are primitive recursive. Let's start with a basic function f of x comma y is just the sum of x and y. So we want to write f as a recursive scheme. So for this we need to see what is f of x zero and what is f of x y plus one. Well f of x zero is just x which we can also write as p11 of x, which we know is one of the basic functions. Um, then this f of x y plus one is of course y plus x plus y plus one, which is s of x plus y, which in turn is s of f of x comma y. And uh, we can write this uh, also the last expression as s of p33 x y f of x comma y. And now we've seen that we've actually turned this into a recursive scheme here, right? If we let um, g be p11 and we let h be um, S in the composition of S and P33. So this shows us that 
um, the sum is primitive recursive. Let's do another example. Um, let's say the function f of x comma y is a subtraction in n, so which is defined as x minus y if x is greater than or equal to y and 0 otherwise. So this is a little bit more complicated. We first define the function um, u of x, which is x minus 1. And um, so to do this, we have a, a, a unary function now. Um, so here the uh, recursion would start with u of 0, which is 0. And then we have u of um, y plus 1, or in, in our case, x plus 1, right, uh, would, of course, be just x, right, which, of course, we can write as p21 um, x um, u of x. So again, uh, here being the zero function, right, and here we have this for h, so we have a recursive scheme for this uh, auxiliary function u. Now we can use this auxiliary function to define x minus 0 as 0 and x minus y plus 1 as x minus y minus 1. And you see the recursion present here, right, using the auxiliary function. So I leave it as a little exercise to uh, actually bring this into a complete recursive or primitive recursion scheme as we did with the other example. So you should go ahead now and um, show that these functions are um, primitive recursive. And as you see, once you have plus, you can of course iterate plus to get times and so on. Uh, of course, the definition, uh, the very definition of uh, factorial calls for a recursive definition too. Moreover, you can use the uh, subtraction over the natural numbers to uh, get expressions for min and max. So give that a try too. You can also use the cutoff subtraction to find an expression for the absolute value of x minus y. Finally, you can use the cutoff subtraction to show, give an easy proof that these two functions, so the sine function or the inverted sine function, are primitive recursive. You can now leverage all these um, basic auxiliary functions on these basic functions that you showed are primitive recursive in showing some um, good robustness properties of uh, the family of primitive recursive functions. Um, so one important one is case distinction. So if g and f0 up to fk are primitive recursive, then the following function that we obtain by case distinction based on the value of g is also primitive recursive. And the idea to prove this would be that you would first show that the function 1 g comma i of x, which is um, 1 if g of x is i or 0 uh, otherwise is primitive recursive, um, just like the function uh, 1 g, let's say, greater than or equal to k of x where this is 1 if g of x is greater than or equal to k and uh, 0 otherwise. And um, once you have those functions, you can now express f as uh, 1 g 0 um, times f 0 plus and so on 1 g k minus 1 times f uh, sub k minus 1 plus uh, 1 
g um, greater than or equal to k times fk. And um, as you can see, this is then because of the closure properties of uh, primitive recursive functions, right, on the composition, and we've already shown that, uh, observed that it's uh, closed on the multiplication and addition, right, we get a primitive recursive description of f. Another important robustness property is the closure under bounded search. So bounded is important. Um, so it means we kind of bound the uh, search, in this case, looking for zeros of a function in advance. If we don't do that, we, as we will see, we will actually get out of the class of um, primitive recursive functions. But let's get to bounded search. So let's assume g is primitive recursive, and we form a function f that returns the least y less than z, for which g x y is 0, or if such um, z does not exist, right? then we just, um, uh, or such y does not exist, then we just return z. Right? So um, this mu operator just says like you can read of this like the least y less than z such that something happens and it returns just the bound if this condition cannot be made true. This um, property is a little bit more complicated. What this amounts to in the end is showing that we have the following identity mu um, y less than z um, g of x y equals zero is can be expressed in the following way, namely as the sum of all v less than z and then the product over all um, u less than equal to v. Now the sine of g of x u. So um, I'll try to unravel this a little bit. Of course there's two operations in here that you first have to show are primitive recursive. We already know that this is primitive recursive, but um, here we have bounded products and bounded sums. But um, this is, again, not uh, not too hard. So once we have that, we had then have a uh, nice primitive recursive uh, definition of this bounded mu operator. So the final two um, robustness properties I want to state here are the um, closure under Boolean, Boolean combinations, so primitive recursive sets. So those are, of course, just sets um, for which um, the um, characteristic function is primitive recursive. So Boolean combinations of uh, sets, uh, or primitive recursive sets, are closed under complement, finite intersections, and finite unions. Um, another very helpful property is the closure under bounded quantifiers. So if R is a primitive recursive relation, then if we form new relations uh, using a bounded quantifier, right, um, uh, this will again be an n plus one area relation because we bound this quantifier by z here. So we need to uh, include this into the definition of the relation. So exists y less than equal to z r, and uh, for all y less than equal to z r, um, are also um, primitive recursive. So again, if we don't bound this, um, as we will see, this you can uh, imagine or think of this cor would correspond to an unbounded search. As we'll see, this would lead us out of the class of primitive recursive functions. Um, but as long as we bound everything, um, we, uh, we're we good. And to prove this, you, you can already see this uh, very much resembles a, a bounded search here. So you can build on that to prove uh, the primitive recursive the recursiveness of these two relations.